Here's our next example of how to balance chemical equations. Now here we have an interesting equation. We have potassium chlorate and that will then react and yield potassium chloride and oxygen. Now that little triangle over here means that it will not happen on its own. You will add, have to add heat. So if we add heat, if we heat this up, it will disassociate into potassium chloride and oxygen gas. By itself, probably nothing will happen. Okay, but this equation is not balanced, so again, how do we balance that? Notice that over here we have potassium by itself in one compound right here, and then we have potassium over there, which means that these two molecules will have to have the same quantity. So if this is one mole of potassium chloride, then we have to have one mole of potassium chlorate. If this is two moles of potassium chloride, we'll need two moles of potassium chlorate just to make sure that the potassium is balanced on both sides of the equation. So to indicate that, we may want to put a little box in front. This indicates that this box will have to have the same number as this box. And again, notice that I left room in front of each uh, molecule so that I would have room to uh, put the numbers in as needed. Okay, next I look at chlorine right here, the chlorine atom. There's one in this molecule and there's one in this molecule, which again means that whatever number I put in there, I must have the same number in there. And finally I go to oxygen and notice I have three oxygens here, three atoms of oxygen in this molecule, and I have two atoms of oxygen in this molecule. So obviously oxygen is not balanced, which means I will have different numbers here and there. So what number do I need? Well, somehow I need to end up with the same number. I have three here and I have two there. It's almost like using fractions and finding the common denominator. What is the smallest number that three and two fit evenly into? And if you can't think of it, sometimes simply taking the product will help. If you multiply three times two, you get six. So six ends up being the smallest number that three and two evenly fit into. So in other words, we'll have to put a number in front here and a number in front there that will end up with six oxygens here and six oxygens there. Well, if I need six ox oxygens here, I'll need to put a three in front of it. And if I need six oxygens here, I will need to put a two in front of that. So now I know that two times three, which is six, I have six oxygens. And three times two is six, I have six oxygens. Now oxygen is balanced. But now these two will no longer be balanced. Remember what we said? that whatever number I have here, I must also have here, otherwise potassium and chlorine will not be balanced, which means I need to place a number two over there so that those are balanced. And now just to check, make sure I didn't mess up anything. I have two potassiums and two potassiums, so those are balanced. I have two chlorines and two chlorines, those are balanced. I have six oxygens here and six oxygens there, those are balanced, so I now have a balanced equation. That means I need two moles of potassium chlorate when heated, will yield two moles of potassium chloride and three moles of oxygen gas. And that's our balanced equation.